Hello, hi. Have you ever felt curious about past lives? Do you really wonder if there is such a thing? Do you hear other people talking about it and just get curious and maybe wonder what may have happened in your past? Is this a real thing? Well, I'm here to tell you that not only do I believe it's real, I help people to experience or what I would call re-experience and re-feel. So let's just talk and dive right into some of the things that may be driving your curiosity and inform you and learn. So let's get right into it. My name's Patricia, and if you're new here, I'm here to help people with their ascension and their twin flame ascension. So the first part I wanna to talk to you about is feeling drawn to a particular time in history. Is this you? So this might be you if you feel particularly fascinated by a certain time frame. You're drawn to films about it. You're drawn to museum exhibits. What could it be? Could it be the Roman Empire? Could it be some other time frame such as uh, the Greek Empire? One very common one, because there have been a lot of incarnations in it, is ancient Egypt. Now, while ancient Egypt is very fascinating for a lot of reasons, just, you know, everything from what they have developed that we now continue to use in modern times, such as embalming practices, mathematics, architecture, there were a lot of differences and it was very unique in the sense that it can almost seem like it was such a completely different culture. Maybe it was from another place. Well, perhaps. Okay, and that's when it starts to get deep. What is it about ancient Egypt? And what did it have that really led to some downfalls? Well, some of it is the very same thing that still is being suffered today. Things like human trafficking, things like um, potions and poisonings and a hierarchy of people, different classes. Now, what is known is that it was a very strong and thriving culture. And yet some people have a horrified response to it or a reaction. And some people will be absolutely fascinated and drawn to it. My mother's own boyfriend, he was actually as a child uh, brought to the Chicago Museum of, uh, of Natural History where they had the very first King Tut exhibit. And some part of him had a memory of being there at that place in time. And he told his mother in a very five-year-old naive way that I know this stuff. I've been here. I've seen it. And she kind of didn't really invalidate him, but was like, yes, dear. Yes, dear. What if you have these kind of feelings that are almost like a flashback to a time in history? But let's take that a step further and get deep with it. What does it mean to you? What is the significance? What do you have to learn from it? Where are you in relation to it right now? And where does it need to be? Okay, were you on the wrong side of history? Were you on the right side of history? Were you one of the winners? Were you of the upper classes? Were you not? You know, all these kind of questions are a part of your experience. Now, another common incarnation, because it's been necessary for life here on Earth to continue to thrive, memories of being an indigenous person, and it was a past life, or some type of a native, such as Native American, uh, Native African, from a country or region or geography somewhere on the continent of Africa, Indigenous, you could be um, from Australia, for example. You could be from the United States. You could be from South America. We forget about Europe and Asia and other places, but anyone that's originating from there, you are inherent to that place. You are indigenous to that place. It's just that as we invented the wheel and we traveled around, we got around a bit more. But what are some of the good things about that, about that being a part of your past life? You're an earth keeper. You are a part of the earth keeper cultures. 
which have been placed strategically around the globe. What did the earth keeper cultures do and why are you know they so revered? Why is there a reverence for some of the things that they created that people still would like to practice today? Well, harmony with nature is one. Harmony with the universe is another. Uh, some sense of something divine beyond our human, uh, human state of being. Also, the earth keeper cultures were keepers of knowledge. Keepers of knowledge. What was the knowledge that they were keepers of? Three main things. One, knowledge of the body. So this did not just pertain to healing and medicine of the physical body, although it was definitely the physical body, such as how to set a bone, uh, what leaves or herbs to make a tincture of or to make a tea of, what do you make a pulse, poultice of, uh, what stones may have healing properties? What elements of nature? I use these same things in the practice and modality that I use. Natural, nature things for the natural side of you. Because there is a living force in those things that help. This is part of what the earth keeper cultures were keeping alive for thousands and thousands of years. So nothing to sneeze at. And yet there's more to it. There is more to the story than you may even realize. Okay, why did we need to keep it alive? Why did we need to keep this knowledge going forward through the generations? Why wasn't it recorded somehow? Some of this can only be answered when you actually see and re-experience. The second thing, earth cultures have earth keeper cultures have been a part of protecting uh increasing awareness and just holding the knowledge and keeping the knowledge alive the spirit that part of us that dreams and travels and where do we go when we die um what about our emotional side so many times this was simply referred to as your spirit or your anima, your, your soul, but it involved your mental process, your mental emotional process, your deep feelings, your superficial feelings, your emotions, your daily emotions about your face it, like you were with the same people pretty much from life till death. Um, falling in love, um, feeling like an outcast, feeling like a failure, a sense of inadequacy, finding your purpose. In other words, what was your calling within your group or your tribe? You know, were you a warrior? Were you a weaver? Were you an artist? Were you a singer? Were you training the horses? Did you forage for things? Did you teach the children? All of these things were considered a part of your spirit. In addition to your connection to the natural world and the supernatural world, it was known to be your living bridge that bridged, bridged the harmony between all of these aspects of your life. Now, the third thing that earth keeper cultures were always known for, the afterlife and what lies beyond. And this was usually relegated to a special person within the group or the tribe who had the gifts and the awareness and the balance and the temperance to be able to guide people, to um, soothe them, to help them connect, connect to ancestors, receive guidance. Now, in many ways, this only went so far, because if you're living in a third dimension, you get to the fourth dimension. Now, for us here in modern times, we're moving beyond this and we have to be able to move. So it's been necessary to have the earth keeper culture alive in several key areas of the globe exactly for this time. So do you feel drawn to a particular time or culture that you feel is somehow inherent to you and maybe even friendlier than your current life situation? And you could be scratching your head saying, why was I born into this family? Or why wasn't I born over there? You're born where you're gonna be most effective, even despite whatever your past has been 
or maybe because of what your past has been. Are you ready yet to dig into some past lives? Okay, let's talk about the next thing. Themes in your dreams. Dreams with themes, okay? What are very common themes and how do these pertain? Well, many times these will show circumstances as well as an immersion effect that gives you the emotional content and yet where you are entirely safe. Many times these are nightmares and they are of war and battle. And sometimes, you know, what, el what else goes with that? Deprivation, sexual predation. These are nightmares. Now these themes are prominent. The other ones that are a little less prominent have to do with family, illness, and destruction. Like you can feel like you're in an urban decay environment where there's nothing around, something has happened, and you have a sense of what that is, but you can't pinpoint it. You feel alone, and, and yet you know you're going on somehow, right? One of the things we love to do in our groups is talk about dreams, interpret them, and help people not only process them, but heal from them. Because many times these are not only relevant, they are revelatory dreams. In other words, they are revealing something. They're revealing something significant. In one of the uh, groups I had, and this was actually one I was giving in another language, so there was some translation back and forth. I found that uh, many people did dream of other cultures. They also dreamed of things like temples. They could describe it in vivid detail and yet still know where they were in present life. And, they, and yet they had a sense of this was then or this is how it was and this is how it is now. This is one of the coolest things about your psyche when it comes to your past lives is it gives you that sense of, that sense is actually called proprioception. It is where are you in relation to the thing? It's the same sense that you know athletes use. It's the same sense if you're driving a car and a squirrel's gonna run across that lets you instantly calculate the point of impact and avoid hitting that poor little animal. Okay, proprioception. This is many times what can deepen your sense of yourself because you get a sense of what is revealed to you and where you are in relation to things and the things that you've actually experienced, what happened to your people and how it's relevant to you now, okay? What is there about it that can help you heal now like this? Which brings me to the third topic in here, addictions, okay? Addictions are a really heavy topic and you know, while people talk about this, many people spend years trying to stop binging, trying to stop some sort of like uh, reliance, codependency, being totally dependent on that thing, that substance. And addictions can take all kinds of forms. It can be addicted to an abuser, but not recognizing that as an abuser. For this purpose, I'm gonna talk about substances Okay, we're going to talk about the topic of alcoholism, of addictions to poisons, okay, poisons, psychotropic drugs that sometimes were not realized that they were psychotropic drugs. In other words, they're having a deep effect on the parts of you that help your psyche process things, okay, and alter your consciousness. Psychedelics, many things can cause a psychedelic reaction, including tainted food. And so some of these things in the past were not voluntary, they were involuntary. Something called St. Elmo's fire, which was a form of mold that actually intoxicated entire towns sometimes. You know, people were doing crazy stuff because it created a psychedelic effect within them and affected their body chemistry. So there's been voluntary and involuntary um, addictions and toxic substances that have happened to people. 
and it accounts for some of the craziness in current life. Heavy sedatives. What if someone is going through an episode, right? They've lost someone. They're in a state of grief. They're bereaved. And yet, someone gives them heavy sedative after heavy sedative after heavy sedative. What happens? An addiction happens. They become dependent on that just to feel normal. And their normal is no longer what their normal is. But they have all this repressed emotion that isn't being processed. Now, these go way back into history because it is true that it runs in families. There are genetic predispositions towards addictions, addictive behavior, even other things, gambling, fighting, um, overeating, um, picking fights with people, too much testosterone, not enough testosterone, too much cortisol, not enough cortisol, people that, you know, value like living on the edge. They need, you know, they're gen adrenaline junkies, right? No. What you need to understand is that addictions are not healthy. There is a past reason. There is like a pivot point somewhere in the past that accounts for when did this start to go off the rails that will tell you which came first, the chicken or the egg. Okay. Why the alcoholism? Now, I have personal experience of this, right? Actually did a regression before I knew a lot about this and I knew how to help people with it much quicker, right? But I wanted to see why, why did this thing, you know, wreck relationships? Why was it so compelling, right? And what I saw was a series of lives where there it was, but the real core reason was grief of being without love, of, of just grieving the loss of love and the lack of love. And I'm sorry to say it, but no amount of telling someone, hey, but you're still loved, you're divinely loved, can really do it for you because that talk doesn't work. What works is digging it out at the root cause and filling it with love. Okay, so while that revealed much to me and I started to understand, you know, how this hopelessness and this lack and it's not just lack mentality like, oh, I don't have enough money for gas. This is like such a deep hole that this is the reason people fill it. And you can do something very quickly, very, very swiftly. You can start to affect rapid transformation when you go to that point in time where you're like flipping the switch, transmute it, transform, build up, heal, build up some more, strengthen and fill, integrate, integrate in the love that you need. Now, addictions in and of themselves, you could almost say, well, of course we have, we needed some kind of substance the shaman gave us in order to talk to our ancestors. Yes, yeah, sure, of course, yes, you can. But doing it repeatedly here isn't filling people's tanks with the love. They still have these core holes. Sometimes they're not even a wound. We call it a wound, but it's like a deep gaping hole. It's almost like an ulcer <laughs> where it, it just can't fill in. And there's nothing you can do that will fill in that tissue because if you keep pouring alcohol on it, that alcohol is going to burn and sting. If you put uh, some kind of psychotropic substance, it's going to be up here and it's going to addle the person's sensibilities and intelligence and dreams, and they further won't be able to process and heal. So, if you're really interested in getting to the meat of the matter and really trying to, you know, like not just, I'm not just talking about jumpstarting yourself here. What I'm talking about is let's get to some pivotal points. I'm going to teach you a technique so that you can have this happen and you're going to talk about it. Okay. One of the really cool things that happened in one of my other classes, there was someone who was struggling with quitting smoking. And the past life that she went to, it was a forest fire that she was unable to escape from. But here was the correlation. 
She died of smoke inhalation. Now she's had this smoking in a couple of lives and in each of those lives, and she's on the course in this life to die again of smoke inhalation. We don't think of smoking, of cigarette smoking as dying of smoke inhalation, but it literally destroys the tissues. And quite honestly, someone will die of smoke inhalation. It's a memory and people gravitate towards it because their memory is more compelling than the love they've been able to get in. So I'm proposing, let me teach you a simple technique in my group so that you can not only swap out that gaping hole and swap in love, get some love in there so that you're uplifted and you continue on your ascension, you learn, you see things, you understand. This type of immersion is speaks a thousand words. It is the picture that speaks a thousand words because you're getting the total immersion in the emotional content. You get the look, the feel, all of the vivid details that are there. And nobody is there talking you out of it, okay? We will discuss it. We will move you into the state where receiving and receiving a deep thing that you need to, which is deeper love than ever before, and moving on with your journey. This is something you could do again and again because when you're stumped during a retrograde, this is gonna be something that you can do. When you are struggling with something and you sense, okay? So you're learning and you are becoming empowered with it. So thanks so much for watching. Please check the description below. Reach out to me if you have questions and I hope you have a great day. Bye.